Halo, uh, selamat siang semua uh, teman-teman sahabat volunteer corner semua mitra wacana uh, bertemu lagi dalam acara podcast kali ini masih bersama saya Arif SW <laughs> Arif SW oke okay, uh, kita masih mau berdiskusi dengan teman-teman dari Australia kita mau ngobrol-ngobrol asik santai dengan Mbak Belkisa dari Perth University eh dari Perth uh, kampusnya Murdoch University nanti kita ngobrol apa ya nanti ngobrol macam-macam lah <laughs> macam-macam gitu nanti kita ngobrol mungkin tentang Indonesia mungkin juga tentang Australia gitu bisa uh, ngobrol tentang apa ya uh, isu gender isu multikulturalis Wah, agak berat itu nanti ya nanti yang santai-santai aja. Oke, okay, tapi uh, kebetulan karena Mbak Balhisa belum uh, bisa bahasa Indonesia dengan baik, maka kita pakai bahasa Inggris. Nah, nanti bahasa Inggrisnya Mbak Balhisa udah sangat baik, saya yang nggak baik. <laughs> Jadi nanti kita belajar bareng aja. Oke, okay, uh, halo Mbak Balhisa, you hear me? Ya. Oke, okay. oke, okay. agak keras sedikit Mas Robi. Ya, yeah. uh, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Ya, yeah, I'm good too. Oke, okay. uh, where are you now? Oh, I'm in the office today. Oke, okay, oke, okay. oke. Okay, thank you, Mbak Balkisa. Uh, you apa? Uh, have a time to discuss with me and apa? Uh, discuss in discussing in podcast volunteer corner okay uh, maybe we can discuss about apa ya yeah? this simple uh, in our life our experience uh, our apa ya yeah? observation maybe about daily life uh, like domestic work like that after that I think interested uh, about uh, any multiculturalism but uh, specific in how Muslim in Australia uh, using hijab <laughs> because uh, in here something it is a, a good discussion about it uh, I want to know about uh, what uh, maybe any problem or not in Australia about it but in we have a two apa ma two session in session uh, in first session i think we will discuss just yeah maybe talk about our observation our experience maybe when we was child or maybe yeah we observation in our environment like that okay mbak Belhisa, uh Uh, about the domestic work what do you think about um, uh, cu- the culture of uh, in in Australia I mean and the culture of domestic work it is any like apa uh, woman is apa the majority woman in Australia is doing the domestic work or men uh, involved too in there are both in flock together in the apa home like that about domestic work maybe you can share your experience or your observation like okay um i think if we're talking about caucasians in australia then it would be more like um a 50 50 i would say that majority um both male and female go and um do domestic work together Um, that's, but that's in saying that that is a normal Australian family. But since Australia is a very multicultural co- country and there's a lot of um, refugees and a lot of people that have moved from other, immigrated from other countries, um, that wouldn't be the same in all households. So in different households, um, the majority of the time you might have the women doing it. Um, I think it also depends on just like the background that they come from. But normally within Australian culture, um, it is both 
um, male and female that are supposed to do all the domestic work together. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, interesting that uh, you say that uh, Australian is a uh, multicultural yeah, uh, area that many people from many country, many apa, place uh, come to Australia that uh, it is related with in here that uh, about uh, related about uh, domestic work yeah? uh, it is the big problem that uh, our culture that patriarchy not just in maybe Indonesia but I think it is uh, apa Uh, many country, many world, apa uh, in world that uh, uh, happen it to that if any people from uh, some country come to Australia, that maybe th- they bring the culture, uh, the culture that maybe the patriarch still s- strong and they still practicing in. Up, uh, their family for example like that. I don't know it is uh, still happen or they learned about the new environment and that uh, Australia open to apa, uh, apa ya, open world that uh, yeah Australia is uh, not patriarchal country that open about um, men and women to something together men have uh, apa, yeah, work in domestic uh, area women can work in public area like that uh, what happen if, if apa, any people come from the other place the other country that they need adaptation I think or they need to learn about the f- value of the Australian uh, value I think how about that So I think it does take time to um, integrate and learn about the values um, of Australia. But yeah, so a lot of people do come from mainly patriarchal like, countries. So when they do come to Australia, it does take a while. So um, majority of the time, it is still the women that do cook and clean and do majority of the domestic work. But over time, um, I think they do realize that household work is supposed to be done together rather than just the female doing it and I also do think it depends on if um, because um, a lot of people do come from countries or backgrounds where both partners aren't working so majority of the time it is the male that is the breadwinner so when they come here it kind of stays that way as well so if the woman is only um, staying at home and is just a housewife she does do majority of the housework So in our background, um, I'm Somali, um, a lot of people that do come and migrate here, other Somalis, still have just the husband that works. In my family, both my mum and my dad work. So both of them do the household work along with me and my brothers. But um, when it comes to people that don't, that have just the um, husband that's working, it is majority it is, it is the wife that does majority of the domestic work. Okay. And uh, when you observe, uh, obs- uh, you apa, do uh, observation like that, that uh, that many people come to, uh, from many country, from Asia, from Africa, from Euro, maybe from America too. Uh, it is uh, apa? Uh, maybe you, I don't know. Yeah, uh, you hear from your friend or maybe you uh, looks around uh, around you and me, uh, when apa ya cooking for example cooking activity or was washing uh, apa ya mm, maybe like uh, in the kitchen tool or else it is apa both of women or men like that uh, is do together because uh, yeah I think it is however we know for example in Indonesia however we know the concept about the gender issue sometimes when we come back to apa in the home uh, 
uh, sometimes the concept that uh, the domestic work is uh, woman work like that sometimes is still happen it is uh, like automatically <laughs> like automatically not not to like that yeah uh, as a woman for example yeah uh, she do uh, domestic work like that and it is not just about concept it is like automatic yet yeah, do something and women uh, and men yeah maybe if not uh apa and the wife asked him to help like then yeah uh, he didn't <laughs> for example whoever know the concept yeah i think nah i don't know it's happened to or not yeah so i d- i definitely think it is more of something that females and women do Um, I think especially with the cooking, the cleaning I think is pretty much done 50-50 but I think with the cooking especially like more women tend to do that so they just automatically tend to go and cook. Um, yeah, so I think but domestic work with cleaning and everything else I think majority of the time can be 50-50. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think it's, uh, but yeah, it's good yeah, I, I, but uh, the concept. But uh, about the uh, apa ya, uh, like a campaigns about the gender issues about equality equity in the family, uh, the apa ya, people that come from many countries that he got the information about that like from maybe community in where they live or they apa got from maybe organization Australian organization or what or they must adapt their self and learn what's the Australian culture and I must uh, apa ya adaptation to apa to adopt it like how, how about that um, so do you mean when people move from other countries uh, and They take a while to yeah they, they got uh, some information about the gender equality for example like that it is uh, they got it from Australia community or government or not or because or maybe many people come uh, to Australia that uh, they bring the patriarchy or maybe bring that yeah they have good the perspective about gender when they come to Australia Sometimes it is uh, can both, yeah. But if they come to Australia, uh, yeah, they must learn too, maybe. Uh, and where or with apa ya, with organization they got the information about this issue, for example, about multicultural, about the gender issues like that. So there are quite a few organizations that help with. Um, migration and um, people settling in and helping them to integrate into Australia. Um, majority of the time, I don't think that I, the information about gender equality is really given to them, only because I think it's that assumption that they would already know that there is gender equality in Australia. But um, of course, if someone was to ask questions, then those questions would be answered. But organizations that they can go to would probably be like um, the Refugee Asylum in Australia or Amnesty or so there's quite a few organizations where you'd um, be able to get that type of information from and once you settle into Australia you'd see that the day-to-day life of Australians would be quite equal so in a workplace you'd see as many females to males or if not more okay Okay, uh, uh, and about the apa on the number fifty uh, 50 I think it is uh, apa a uh, good that have any apa ya yeah, communication yeah between a uh, both uh, maybe uh, the couple, a man and woman that yeah uh, I do something you do something that we can do together like that uh, like that or maybe in the family because they have a uh, children and they teach that yeah uh, our children for example uh, a man or woman must do domestic work together uh, it is not apa uh, just a man or just a woman like that 
uh, it is automatically in a family uh, now uh, teach like that uh, and how r how about related with the concept of religion for example uh, about uh, uh, related with influence in the w domestic work like that um, I think majority of couples have that conversation before they choose to move in or if in the case of children they have that conversation probably before they have children so um, that's to do with domestic work I think um, when it comes to teaching their children at this point in time I think there is still those like um, patriarchal assumptions that a female should be doing majority of the household work so I think it just depends on the family that you're brought up in in some families and in some cultures um, they do think that females are supposed to do majority of the work so they teach their, um, their children daughters to cook and clean whilst they don't teach the same thing those same basic skills to their sons which I think is quite detrimental um, whilst in some households they teach both their daughters and their sons um, I don't believe that religion has a big part to play in that but I definitely do think that culture does. So um, it just depends on what culture, what beliefs, or what background you come from, whether you choose to do the domestic work. Okay, okay, thank you, Belfisa. And uh, related with the apa ya in Indonesia, uh, if I apa will share about the concept. Sometimes we, uh, I observe. Uh, in my environment or when we discuss with some uh, people that uh, apa, uh, apa ya, know about this concept in the past uh, um, some parent or many parent uh, teach the children that uh, the woman uh, must do the domestic work like this like this like that and uh, man, uh, you do the others work, uh, but not in the kitchen, for example, like that. Yeah, it is uh, common in there. Uh, I, I ever apa ya, had experience that when the man or the boy, for example, go to the stall, uh, buy uh, like ingredients of the apa ya, in apa to cooking to cook like that uh, the father said uh, it is embarrassing that boy go to the market or go to the apa stall by uh, ingredient like that now sometimes it is uh, happened a uh, common in the past year but it changed now uh, it uh, it has it have changing I think uh, because now it is very common uh, man uh, or boy uh, go to the market like that so at first still sometimes the uh, image that uh, yeah man is embarrassing go to uh, apa, go market by uh, the ingredient uh, in, apa, in the kitchen like that apa, in the kitchen needed nah, it is apa ya the long concept that it it's changed ah i don't know uh because it is maybe different culture yeah different uh in austria Aust australia that many people come from many country that yeah in from asia africa and the others uh what's the any apa maybe your observation that uh, the culture when they come it is commonly that they apa the patriarchal concept is uh, they apa ya didn't take like that they have a new concept not use patriarchy like that or what uh, I think it does happen but it does take a while to happen so um, majority of people when they first migrate or move to Australia they do still have that matriarchal concept but as generations go by I feel like it kind of withers away um, so if you look at 
majority of like us um, families that probably came from because I was born here, but my parents weren't. So if you look at their generation, it is majority of the time um, the wife that's always cooking and cleaning, whilst the husband goes out and works. So as we get um, like if you look at my generation, the majority of both male and female go out and work and majority of people can both clean and cook. So I think it just does take a while for it to happen, but at the end of the day, it does. And I just think that um, the reason that um, the third world or third world countries haven't yet still have that patriarchal values within them is because it hasn't gone away just yet because if we do look at um, first world countries at the moment um, if we look at them decades ago they still had the women that would cook and clean and they still had the men that would work so I think it just took a bit of a couple years for them to get out of it so I think the same thing will happen to developing or less developed countries at some point yeah okay yeah I think when uh, they apa ya communicate ya for example a couple a communicate for apa about the domestic work and apa uh, they have apa uh, concept that it is apa the work can do by a boat like that it is uh, apa the concept is more easy but something the farmer concept the apa the traditional concept like that yeah something still happen uh, for example but yeah now uh, the what I think is apa ya change slowly that uh, many people accepted the concept the gender equality gender equity however it is need the apa ya uh, good uh, apa to social socialist apa the apa the concept uh, to spread the concept to people like that but uh, yeah uh, I think uh, many NGOs are no government for example in Indonesia uh, very supported about this concept about the gender apa issues yeah about yes yeah, some work that women can do that uh, men can do too for example a uh, uh, woman can do public apa public work men can do a uh, domestic work it is a uh, depend of the apa ya yeah, what they want if they want to do this apa the domestic work for example as a, a choice they choose to do this uh, as a free free choosing like that uh, it is a, a more good I think like that and uh, I want ask you I want to ask you about uh, about now apa? the the children it does not have apa like psychologic apa ya uh, problem like that when they do some apa domestic work I mean maybe in the apa ya some migrant apa migrant people that maybe from the family that still have the patriarchy concept for example uh, and when they apa uh, communicate or uh, apa ya uh, relate with the different people maybe from Australian people or the other people that they know oh it is different concept with different culture and maybe any some psychologic apa problem or what maybe you you can share about it um, I feel like it would definitely cause some sort of issues especially if um, at the moment both females and males are expected to as children grow up um, you have to in Australia you have to study until the age of year 10 I think 
it's 15 or 16. Okay. Uh, so you have to be in school until then. And then after that, you get the choice to leave. So um, it's definitely going to cause some issues if the daughter has to cook and clean and do all the domestic work in the house, as well as having to keep on top of her studies, whilst the son, all he really has to do is study. So I think after that, um, I know some girls that have grown up where they've had to cook and clean um, up until they finish school, until they've gone out into uni and realised that everyone else didn't have to do the same thing growing up. So I think it definitely causes some sort of issues and just some sort of hostility towards your parents, not understanding that this is how the Australian values are and we do have gender equality and we don't actually live in a patriarchal society. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is interesting. I want to uh, share uh, because it is like, uh, yeah, we can discuss uh, discuss and then compare about the um, uh, yeah, uh, about maybe Indonesia and uh, Australia. And apa uh, when uh, when I was a child, uh, many apa uh, many parent, for example, uh, like apa um, father like a father, especially a father like that, they. Uh, I observed that many uh, father in the past uh, didn't do like apa uh, yeah like in the kitchens work like that that because the concept is yeah it is woman uh, work like that and every morning maybe uh, every apa uh, every mother uh, must do uh, make must make uh, tea or coffee or apa uh, made uh, some snack like that. Ah, uh, but the children uh, now learn about this uh, concept, not about the apa uh, about the they speaking much like that much like. That, but they observe oh, uh, uh men do is just apa ya uh, be served by uh, wife for example and then they in apa ya unconscious maybe uh, after they grow up and they married the children they will practice it <laughs> like that because they learn about the uh, apa ya uh, the practicing uh, concept from the family like that Whoever maybe the parents uh, and the father not teach you do must teach you, you do must like that, eh? but they learn about the apa ya yeah, situation. <laughs> yeah, I think um, boys generally have that issue more than girls do, only because I think they go and they sit back and see their mom always doing the work and their father just sitting and relaxing while the mother goes and serves the food, um, clean, washes the dishes, does the laundry. Um, and it's just that general expectation that they won't have to do anything. So I think depending on how they end up after, um, so after they finish or move out, uh, finish university or move out of home and start to live with someone other than their own family, that they need to understand that it isn't going to be you getting served, it's rather you have to work together in a household. Yeah. So, um, and I think just the for females growing up, it is easier to adapt to that rather than it is for males because they haven't had to do anything on their own for the first 18 years of their lives. Instead, it was always their mom doing everything for them. Okay. Okay, before we break, uh, I, I want to share about apa that a uh, good idea that some uh, apa like short video that uh, campaign it is the apa ya like a product ever but have a value a gender equality about apa and the kids uh, they apa uh, the man as a uh, but chef, man as a chef, 
and apa do the domestic work especially a cooking and a woman support it like that but the it is a short video it's good apa uh, good short video i think maybe uh, in different time you must share it <laughs> in youtube it is apa uh, it in indonesia international like apa ya by apa an economic apa short video i am forget the name okay before we continue the discuss uh, we will break first uh, balhisa uh, maybe about three minutes or five minutes and after that we can discuss again in the apa second session okay Waalaikumsalam. Eh, ono apa ya Mas? Kok rame-rame ngene iki? Oh ya Allah, aku lali. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi pemirsa. Kali ini saya akan memberikan tips dan trik buat kalian cara menjaga kesehatan mental di saat pandemi Covid-19 ini. Seyo Mas, aku tak nganggo sepatu dulu. Teman-teman tahu nggak sih menjaga kesehatan mental pada saat pandemi COVID-19 ini sangat penting loh. Ada beberapa hal yang dapat menyebabkan gangguan kesehatan mental, seperti rasa ketakutan atau rasa cemas kita akan adanya wabah, dan rasa jenuh, saat karantina kemudian banyaknya informasi yang simpang siur dan belum tentu jelas dan faktanya Gak jarang itu semua dapat mengganggu kecemasan serta mengganggu kesehatan fisik dan mental Nah apa aja sih langkah-langkah yang harus dilakukan untuk mengatasi kesehatan mental pada saat COVID-19 ini? Yuk ikutin terus! Yang pertama yaitu selalu melakukan aktivitas fisik seperti olahraga, melakukan peregangan, dan latihan pernafasan yang membantu kita untuk menenangkan diri atau merilekskan dan jangan lupa berjemur di bawah sinar matahari ya untuk meningkatkan imun tubuh kita. Nah buat teman-teman tips yang kedua yaitu selalu mengonsumsi dan memperbanyak makanan yang bergizi Asupan nutrisi yang cukup juga dapat menjaga kesehatan mental loh Baik secara langsung maupun tidak langsung Nah tips yang ketiga kalian selalu menggunakan waktu luang untuk kegiatan yang bermanfaat Seperti membaca buku Selanjutnya, tips yang keempat, bijaklah kalian dalam memilih informasi yang dibaca. Jangan sampai informasi yang kalian baca membuat merasa cemas dan takut akan adanya pandemi COVID-19 ini. Atur waktu kamu untuk menonton film, 
membaca, dan mendengarkan berita mengenai pandemi COVID-19. Meski begitu, jangan menutup diri sepenuhnya dari informasi yang penting ya. Dan jangan lupa, dapatkan informasi mengenai pandemi dari sumber yang terpercaya. Iya Bu, Assalamualaikum. Saya-saya selalu ya. Nah, tips yang terakhir yaitu selalu menjaga komunikasi dengan keluarga maupun kerabat dekat. Berikut tips dari saya untuk teman-teman selalu jaga kesehatan dimanapun dan kapanpun. Terima kasih, see you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, okay. we meet again. <laughs> we meet again. <laughs> Oke, okay, uh, Pelkisa, uh, still uh, related with the multi culture yeah, issues about it. Uh, may I ask you about uh, any s- apa any apa uh, like some problem like that f- uh, f- for maybe muslim woman uh, that do apa wearing hijab like that in in australia um i think there's definitely issues within australia i've never personally had anyone say to me say anything to me because of my hijab but um there has been cases in sydney and melbourne where um when muslim women have been assaulted because just purely because they're Muslim. And I think it does, other, other than men who you won't really be, by looking at them, you really can't tell the religion that they that they have. But with Muslim women, of course, majority of us do wear the hijab. So um, there has been some attacks on Muslim women in the Eastern states. I haven't really heard of anything happening within my city. I think it's because it is quite a smaller city. But yeah, that definitely has been attacks um, in Australia on Muslim women. Yeah, the, it is uh, related with the concept majority, minority, apa, minority like that. Because in Indonesia, uh, yeah, we have uh, some, apa ya, hot issue about it. Hot <laughs> issue about it. <laughs> And the new, apa, new, apa, Uh, news that some uh, some place in part of Indonesia that uh, that much um, majority is Muslim that they apa ya have a rule that uh, the student must uh, wearing hijab whether it is Muslim or not like that and okay. it is uh, have a problem now and uh, that uh, the protest from many people. and uh, the apa ya the government too the central uh, government that yeah it is not apa not pancasila like that it is like na, the our ideology in indonesia, indonesia ideally is pancasila that uh, we apa uh, ac- accommodate the different culture different religion like that that uh, i think it is not mass uh pa? the the student that uh, not uh, not muslim for example yeah must uh, use hijab i think uh, pa? yeah and but uh, uh before you come in uh any apa uh, uh some place too uh but uh in in bali in the past uh, years ago that uh had any apa uh, yes that like a rule too that uh, the muslim student apa uh, uh, forbidden using hijab for example now nah, it is still same a problem too i think 
Nah, because in the concept of job about majority minority, sometimes when the egoistic of the majority, it is uh, I don't know, it is uh, the big issues too uh, in the some place like that. Maybe you can share about that. Too. Um, so with the Muslim school that I went to and the ones around Perth and around Australia, um, a lot of them do have that same rule where. Um, all students need to wear the hijab whether you are non-Muslim and whether you choose not to wear the hijab in your daily life because in Australia you do have a lot of people that are Muslim but don't actually wear the hijab when they go out um, but within the school we would everyone would have to wear the same coloured hijab to school um, but I didn't think that was much of an issue of course because majority of the people that went to the school were Muslims and there were um, other Christian schools or other um, Jew um, Jewish schools or public schools that you could go to if you did not want to wear the hijab and you were not Muslim. Okay. Um, yeah, so, and then th there's schools that, such as the one that my brother goes to, they're also a Muslim school, but they, um, they have a lot of non-Muslims that go there and um, they aren't forced to wear the hijab. So it's by choice if you want to wear the hijab or not. Okay, okay. Nah, uh, yeah, however, it is maybe about the belief, yeah. I think uh, many places that still have a problem about, yeah, about the religion belief, about the, uh, uh, maybe about the clothes, like that identity of the religion, Sometimes we look like the other uh, pa, people that not same with us is like the apa ya yeah, the like apa uh, different like that. It is yeah because we apa ya yeah, sometimes uh, because maybe uh, our community is same like that. When we look many people that different, we cannot adapt we cannot accept the differences like that uh, i think it is apa in in Yogyakarta, i think it is the good apa yeah place that many people come to Yogyakarta and they communicate however in Yogyakarta still any apa yeah, case a uh, small group that are not accepted something the difference concept like that but uh, in Yogyakarta is many people come here from many place part of Indonesia and part of the world uh, they come communicate and it 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 makes uh, we know oh a, any people that different from us like that <laughs> that uh, we can uh, accept the differences and what do you think about the apa, like multicultural listen like that Maybe it is apa teach in in school like that in Australia. I don't believe it's really taught in school, um, only because majority of the school uh, of like your schooling years, you won't actually have any situation where um, you're with the same type of group of people. So in in either public schools or a lot of Muslim schools, um, you do see the or in university you're, if you're in a classroom full of 20 then you're probably going to have 15 other people that don't come from the same background as you so I don't think it's generally something that's taught, I think it's something that people just generally understand um, I do think the people that find it harder to understand obviously are people that are probably um, raised in com um, small communities such as like small Catholic communities or Catholic schools where the predom where they're predominantly Caucasian Australian whilst all other schools or um, have different cultures or different backgrounds so I don't think they need that general teaching of multiculturalism because they just have that general respect for one another but um, I think that definitely changes once you go to university and there's that freedom of speech or freedom to say what you want to other people Okay. Uh, how many like community are 
how many religion community maybe in the part maybe in your environment it is uh, many community in there too i mean they apa interact with the other like that um i don't actually know how many religions there are only because i'm pretty sure there's hundreds within australia um we the, all places do have their own so like muslims have their own mosques um indians have their <laughs> hindu have their own temples same as jewish with their synagogues and um i just think with schools like for example when we went to the muslim school um we did do like um multicultural activities with other schools where we try to break back borders um it's kind of like an activity where either we'd go to our group of students would go to their school and their group of students would come to our school and we try to understand one another and our beliefs and cultures okay yeah uh about the apa ya uh yeah still about the multicultural yeah however it is maybe we know that difference apa different apa people it's common it is apa ya for example in indonesia is many apa tribe like that many language that if we apa looks the differences where well, we looks many differences in here too in indonesia and in indonesia we have like apa ya semboyan i don't know the name in english semboyan <laughs> like bineka tunggal ika <laughs> like that. it is like apa like uh, uh, sanskrit language like that that uh, so that however we different uh, we still uh, apa Uh, same one like that. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Balkista about ah, uh, for example, your it is hijab ya. Yeah? I <laughs> I interested about the hijab in Indonesia. We have uh, apa ya yeah? many kind of hijab like that. It is very popular now in Indonesia. Ah, uh, woman wearing hijab and many kind of. Uh, hijabs uh, like that I don't know uh, it is a popular to maybe in the woman Muslim in Australia that many kind of uh, hijab like that a different color like that or same in the black or in the blue or what <laughs> no so there are just a, a lot of different types of colors um, so you can buy brown pink blue You, um some people choose to wear it differently so some people just you choose to wear just one cloth or some choose to wear like the really long ones and then others choose to like just wrap their hair but leave like their neck um and some Muslims in Australia don't even choose to wear the hijab so yeah um but within school situations we were all made to set, wear the same white hijab so it was as if it was a uniform and we purchased it from the school as well But in our day-to-day lives, a lot of people wear different types of hijab, different colors, and some just um, wear different styles of the hijab as well. Okay, the hijab that you wear, it is a uh, common in Somali community like that. No, actually, um, I think maybe Somali girls wear it, but um, a lot of other and just I think just the general. Girls in Australia wear it, okay. so we all just wear the one where we um kind of just place it on. Um, the majority of like the elder community where decide to wear the like the really long ones that cover like majority of their body. Okay. So I think it's just like young people that wear ones that are smaller. Okay, because I I don't know the apa ya about the really uh some people say that. Uh, hijab in apa in Indonesia is very colorful, many co- color that apa wears, uh, and, uh, and some apa some country maybe or some place like that is like the same color, like a uh, black or just apa uh, brown or like that, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you observe about that? Observe about that. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, I see like the Indonesian community and like Malaysian communities in Australia, they're quite colorful. Um, and they also wear a specific type of hijab, like the ones that I'm guessing that they wear in Indonesia as well. So they don't wear the same types that we wear, but I think us Africans, um, also probably um, like the Arabs, yeah, we kind of wear the same style of hijab, which is just like the piece of cloth that's on our heads. Okay. What's the common color? Uh, for example, in African or Arabic? Black? We actually don't have a common color. I think it just depends on what you want to wear. Uh-huh. So I, I, w- I just wear black because it goes with everything. Okay. So I can wear whichever, whatever clothes I want and black will still go with it. Okay. So I think it's just whatever color you like to choose because I have several colors at home I just wear black majority of the time yeah uh, and then it's, yeah, I know uh, it is very common uh, women are wear, uh, wearing are wearing hijab yeah uh, in the past uh, uh, before up uh, yeah, new era uh, new era is uh, or the baru in Indonesia new era I mean, <laughs> that the Suharto leader that uh, in many uh, school, uh, it is forbidden using apa uh, hijab like that. Uh, it is apa uh, that in the past very apa uh, abnormal that uh, student, a woman student, using uh, a girl student using uh, hijab like that but now it is a uh, difference is many students using hijab and something the problem is any school that make it is the apa uh, mash like that uh, mash wearing like that uh, it is uh, the big problem but if it is in the church it is a difference like that yeah. and uh, yeah what else uh, about hijab and what else yeah about a play maybe uh it is come uh, i mean uh pray uh pray in the mouth a uh, pray in the apa uh church and yeah. in the temple for example uh it is apa yeah didn't have don't, don't have a problem like that in australia no so um if like if a um, religion wants to build a like a mosque or a church or a um, synagogue or temple, they'll what they'll have to do is they have to get um, approval from the government first because um, with like the speakers. So for example, if the adhan's going off, there's only specific areas that you're allowed to have a mosque because of the loudness of that. So um, you can't have it near houses. You have to have it majority of the time in like. A warehouse type situation or on a big plot of land um, so as long as the government approves of it um, then it can be built and in the case of like prayers um, yeah so we have for Muslims we have our five daily prayers that have been in all the mosques and they just have like an assigned Imam that leads all those prayers okay and because yeah yeah sometimes the place to upper uh, to pray it is something a uh, problem too <laughs> in the some place it is a problem too that uh, yeah uh, I think uh, what wha- ho- apa it is how many if you uh, look for example in the bird it is very common marks like that you you apa easy to to apa see in the mask like that um it's okay i think there's about like 20 to 30 which isn't as much as a muslim country but um because majority of people do drive a car here yeah but it is very easy to get to the closest mosque the closest mosque would probably be about maximum of a 10 minute drive from wherever you are okay and uh we had uh apa ya uh we had uh like a, a volunteer too uh from Australia in the past former volunteer that from a uh, china that uh 
studied in in Australia in Melbourne if I apa didn't wrong uh, uh, she she apa uh, taught me that uh, about the apa ya about believe in apa about apa her belief in China that yeah she didn't have imagination about that yeah about apa ya people have a belief and go to to pray in mass or maybe a church something it is different apa ya different apa grow up in different place it is something the imagination is so different like that do you mean where um they don't believe in any religion yeah uh, she apa told me that yeah the the she didn't have like a uh, religion like that she didn't have religion and she told about uh, imagine how imagine that how people can apa yeah a pray in the some place and yeah it is difficult imagination for her yeah <laughs> yeah so i think in australia we call that either atheist or agnostic okay so that people don't believe in any religion okay and we have quite a few of those in australia so i would say the the vast majority is either atheist or agnostic which mm. they don't have a religion at all or they don't believe in anything so they just live their day-to-day lives okay yeah 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 it is apa ya common ya the agnetics you apa ever meet uh some people apa uh like, like that then discuss about that yeah yeah definitely very common yeah yeah uh now uh about the any visiting and related with neighbor in your complex it is the same uh apa ya same culture or same apa uh, background like that or differences and you sometimes communicate with the others because in here like uh we common that in the same place uh, some people have a meeting gathering together with the neighbors like that uh, to know each others like that and if any problem they can apa apa help each other like that oke okay, terima kasih teman-teman volunteer corner semua teman-teman mitra wacana semua uh, acara uh, podcast kali ini udah selesai tadi sempat keputus sebentar karena mati lampu <laughs> jadi <coughs> kita Uh, selesaikan uh, maksudnya kita closing uh, acaranya terima kasih Balhisa terima kasih teman-teman semua yang sudah menonton saksikan uh, podcast selanjutnya uh, podcast kali ini kalau nggak salah yang ke-14 jadi saksikan selanjutnya yang mungkin minggu depan oke okay, terima kasih see you